I know it is confusing that, you know, some strategy profile is being Nash and then not SPA &E or SPA &E but not Nash. It's like, what the hell is going on? So here, the player one is, is playing you, goddammit. I mean, he will never, you know, have, he will never have the opportunity of playing you or H here because he has chosen to play you. So why do I worry about, uh, you know, you here or T here? Remember, that's the idea of non-credible threat. So if it, if it is not clear, please go back to the video that I posted. So that example is very simple. Sometimes, you know, in a sort of extensive form game, one player is threatening you. It's like, look, player one says, I'm going to play, you know, uh, you, all right? And so do not play R because you're going to end up uh, zero. So by this threat, he is forcing the second guy to choose a sort of L, right? Um, but this threat is clearly non-credible uh, because if the game really comes to this point, obviously player one is a rational guy, uh, he will, don't forget, these players do not have some sort of revenge idea in their mind, or if even if they had, all those feelings are incorporated into those payoffs. All right. So therefore, once the game comes to this point, players will erase the back. I mean, uh, the, the the past of the game, and they will just look at the future. It's like, what payoff do I really want? Do I want three or zero? Well, uh, I'm a rational guy, so I want three. So that means I should be choosing D. So that part, I believe, is kind of obvious and and sort of straightforward for everyone. But what is missing maybe is a why Nash does not capture this, but SPE &E or backward induction does capture this idea of non-credible threat. Well, here is the reason. The Nash equilibrium concept is uh, as if, all right? So remember previously, no, not in this course. So as if approach is sort of, uh, I mean, players or you know, decision makers do not actually do it or do not actually think like this, but we model it as if they think that way. So the Nash equilibrium it sort of analyzes a game as if they are playing a simultaneous move game. Remember, we write the normal form representation. So these are the strategies of the player one, while well, he has eight, and these are strategies for player two. And then before they start the game, we are asking them to choose a strategy. All right, player one, are you gonna choose DHU or something else? And player two, are you going to choose L? Once they choose those strategies, the Nash equilibrium, the idea of Nash equilibrium, assumes that the players will have no opportunity to change or revise those strategies. So they choose once and for all. And then that's it. That's the end of the game. However, extensive form games, yes, players may... Uh, start with some strategy in their mind, all right? Like chess, I have a strategy in my mind, but then according to my opponent's strategy, I may actually change my or revise my strategy. So therefore, what should be this strategy that I will never revise again and again and again, meaning it's going to be a robust strategy which doesn't require me to revise it. You see what I mean? So the optimality... The, the concept of optimality is slightly changing, which we call it, by the way, sequential rationality. So what is the strategy for me as player one? Is it DHU, U2U, what is it that I do not need to revise it again and again, all right? So here, revising basically means, well, yes, I am, for example, U2U. So I am actually planning to play U, but all of a sudden, for some reason, think about it, all right? I made a mistake, maybe. Maybe. Does that mean that I'm going to play U here? No, I mean, it happened, right? For some reason, I ended up playing D. For some reason, all right? But the past is, I mean, bygone is bygone. So what I'm going to do now, am I going to play U really here or H really here? So you see what I mean? For whatever reason... Even if you think the, the, the part of the game will never be reached because you played something else, you should be choosing optimally. 
And that idea of optimality, which we call sequential rationality, we say we need to incorporate this concept into solutions of extensive form games. And hence, we create this concept of subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. 